education from people being educated to being trained, basically dog training. And I've had the former head of policy, Department of Education, Charlotte Isserby, and many others on the show. I've read the documents where they planned to attack the family, to break down society, to get rid of morals so that they can replace them with their globalist morals. And your film gets into this, and I mean, this isn't your opinion. This is the fact. This is a diabolical program against our society, and it's been duplicated all over the world. Anywhere these globalists are in control, the Rockefeller Foundation, the World Council of Churches, the, t taking the churches over. Uh, this is in private schools as well. As you know, it's just worse uh, in the government indoctrination centers, the public schools, and they use our tax money, our property taxes, to destroy our youth and turn them into these hollow little uh, consumers, and you go through it all. So, yes, it's done a great job. It's been an incredible success and and the more federalization we get the more dumbed down our children get and then the more control there is i was just reading they're now going to standardize and biometrically scan everybody when they take tests to make sure there's no cheating and it's a federal database to do that uh so so break down your findings in the film uh that you know i mean really all tie this together because this proves that there has been a conspiracy against our children well, people are nostalgic about the schools. They want to go back to the 50s and think it'll be better. But if you go back further than that, you find out there was an agenda early on. So uh, in New Harmony, Indiana, they established this system which was socialist. And the desire uh, was to, and this is, so, socialists and Marxists do this, this one important thing. They get the children away from the parents. So they, instead of serving the family, they start to serve the state or the interests of those that the state helps, particularly at that time, the Industrial Revolution. So they saw people as a product. They wanted to detach them from their parents and start to have them serve them. So that was what, what the Prussian model was based on as well, this militaristic society which uh, wanted to use people for warfare. And now fast forward 200 years to us when we are living in a world where the public schools really are the indoctrination centers to train people for war, for the, they don't teach them uh, the basic thing. I mean, if you think what the, the schools are meant to do, that is the one thing they're failing at. But look at all the things that they are, the children are coming out. They're coming out believing in abortion rights and homosexuality and all the things which the parents probably or might not believe in. Exactly. Even if you're for that or against it, right. Why is the state in there saying, we control your kids? I mean, it's like the law now in California where they will inoculate your children if they convince them that. So this is the state coming in and, and, and really proving that it wants to take the children uh, away from the parents. In fact, you just brought this up. And he came to me with Charlotte Isserby's book, Deliberate Dumbing Down, the uh, new um, edition that came out. And it showed Department of Education documents and reports of where in the U.S. they... They, they tell the children, okay, close your eyes, pray to God, ask for candy. And they close their eyes, pray to God, and they don't get candy. And they say, okay, now ask the state, ask government for the candy, close your eyes. And they do, and they go, here, you got candy. The state can give it to you. God's not real. The state is God. I don't want to tell this story on air. No one will believe it. But he said the reason they basically shut down our school was because they came to my parents and said, okay, you pray to God and ask for milk. And they have the children, this is in kindergarten, pray. <clears throat> in the morning when they're hungry in a poor country, they, they open their eyes, there's no milk. They go, pray to Chavez. They pray to Chavez and they all get milk. And I said, no, I believe you. And then later I was, uh, Aaron goes, wait a minute, this is in this book, but in the U.S. it's candy. Mm -hmm. Because, but I mean, it's, it, it's so diabolical that 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 this is going on what chavez is doing he got from us absolutely it really is an american system and the school bus is a symbol of this mass system to indoctrinate our culture and our culture we talk to people and you talk to people on the street so many of them are status minded they're completely committed to the state they completely love the state and so you're trying to shake them away from that and that's because they've been educated by the state whoever educates is the one that controls the future of our culture and it's the saddest thing is the majority of conservatives and the majority of Christians in America still use the public schools ignorant of the fact that the, is undermining their, the, their own faith, their own culture, their own, their own politics. And, and you're turning your children over to them. I mean, I remember articles in mainstream news like it was normal 15 years ago where they were teaching sixth graders about stuff that I didn't even know about as an adult. I mean, things I won't even say on air. Right. 
and they were taking them to universities in dorm scenarios. And, 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 and I mean, it's, it's like, it's creepy. It's beyond bizarre that, that, that you realize it's a bunch of perverts and weirdos that want our kids and we just give them to them. Well, you're statistically more likely to be molested by an employee of a public school than any other profession. That, that is something that reveals to us that the, the, they should not be considered as safe places for your child. The, the, you mentioned, you know, the, 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 some of the stuff that's, that you've heard mentioned to children in the classroom, but also outside the classroom, peer pressure is a significant issue in the lives of children. Oh, yeah, these are modern kids that have been destroyed. You don't want to put your kids in with them. Yep. I mean, that's so destructive. It's, I mean, I, I went to public school, I did. and my parents were naive. They're not bad folks, but I can't believe... That they that they allowed this to go on, but but it was just the normal thing to do. I mean, the 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 sex, the fighting, and people are like, oh, I bet that was fun. No, it wasn't fun. I'm lucky I survived it. Right. I mean, parents are parents are self deceived. They're partly deceived by the public schools themselves. Public schools don't advertise the the molestations, the shootings, the violence, and all the rest of it on their school. The website. police were dealing they, drugs in my school. Right. <laughs> so, you, so you, you, the, the, you don't, you don't, I'm sure you didn't come home and just list all the things that you. No, I didn't, that's nothing. I didn't tell them. You, yeah, children don't. So parents don't know what what is going on with their child. You know why? Because I was away. embarrassed. Right. Right. So you never bring it up. So parents are, se are I think they're self deceived in part because they want to believe what they're doing is right for their child. And the truth is, it isn't even in the best schools. We have a section in this film about the best schools. You know, the t I'll give you an example of one of the best schools. Columbine. Columbine's a great school in a great area. And we have testimony from one of the fathers who lost his child in Columbine. And he testifies to the fact that it was his fault. He put his child in care of this system, which he knew was evolutionary mindset about the children's children allowed promiscuity, allowed all these terrible things going on. So he took accountability for that fact. He, do not trust your children to the well, state. This is, uh, you know, the lady was head of policy, right. dad skull and bones, grandfather skull and bones, a you know, big academic, but uh, she was the head of policy, number two department of education. This is under Reagan, of course. Yes. And, and she gets in there. And it, it's all like, yeah, we're going to create communism. We're going to merge with the Soviet Union. She's got all the documents in there. I mean, she was there, and we're going to destroy the family. She's got all the documents there. But but uh, the book used to be the size of the Dallas phone book. Now, now it's just 500 pages long or so. And uh, I guess I hadn't read the whole thing before. I thought I had, or I'd forgotten the story. Or perhaps it's just in this new, shorter edition, of abridged and updated, but in here, Aaron goes, hey, the story that Max, the IT guy, tells about how horrible Chavez is, right. he's anti-communist because he grew up you know, around it. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes on and describes in here how they put the candy, you know, they say, again, pray to God and ask for candy, and then you don't get the candy, and then pray to, pray to the government, you get the candy, and it proves the government can give you the candy. I mean, Aaron, how amazing is it to hear Max tell the story, but he wouldn't come on air because he said folks won't believe it, and then here it is in her book with the government documents. I mean, Yeah, what? this is something Max saw for himself in recent times. This is something they started back in the 60s when they started taking prayer out of schools. Right. I forget the exact date, you probably know. Uh, but and they call the family the disease in here? It's that whole state is God mentality that you pray to a leader of some kind that only people can help you. And we, we advocate homeschooling for the reason that the, the state is this competing authority. And you can know what your child is doing at all times, what they're believing and who's with them, what's being taught to them. And that's a great merit of homeschooling. You're with them and they'll end up like you. I mean, that's what you want for your Are kids. you kidding? When I was in an intermediate school, and got off the school bus, you know, from fifth grade to intermediate, there were like kids that had flunked three, four times that had mustaches beating me up every day. <laughs> right, right. You don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's a brutal world out there. And I remember being now. on the school bus back home when I was 11 years old uh -huh. and not knowing what frosting was all around my eyes, like all blurred, I had concussions being beat up. Wow. And then not even telling my parents, just going home and going to bed with concussions. Right. Yeah. And I mean, this is what we do to our kids. It's and the schools just let them beat yeah. the hell out of you. And, and, and again, then their answer is more police state because your kids are being sure. beat up. No, don't put them in this cesspit that created a culture that's like this.